Hey there! Welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane. This video is part of my technical series, and today we're going to be talking about Input Lab. So, in an earlier uh, episode, I actually talked about televisions and how to calibrate them properly and stuff like that. And um, one of the things I really didn't go over was input lag. Um, and actually, there's quite a few people out there that might not understand what in input lag is. So let's just go ahead and uh, define it. It's defined as the delay between pressing a button uh, and the reaction on the screen. So say, let's just simplify it down to uh, Super Mario World on the NES. Now, CRTs don't really have input lag, but this is just the example. You press the button to jump, and however, milli however many milliseconds it is, is how, many, how much lag there is between when you press the button and when he jumps. So the idea is you want that as low as possible. In fact, there are several... Uh, classic games that really depend on that la input lag being extraordinarily low. Like, oh, what's the big one? It's uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out or Punch-Out. Um, if your input lag is really, really high for that game, um, not going to have an easy time beating it. And if it's even high enough, you cannot beat it. So uh, that that's essentially what input lag is: is the 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 amount of delay between pressing the button and seeing the action on the screen. Uh, there are other YouTube channels out there that explain this quite a bit more. Like my life in gaming has master classes in this. Um, I'm I'm trying to approach this at high school, maybe grade school level, and they have what I would consider a doctoral in this. So um, that and then uh, Bob over at uh, Retro RVG. Retro RVG. Uh, whatever, I'm going to get the name wrong. So uh, here's a couple of good, good, good uh, things to come across and just to keep in the back of your mind. Basically anything over 40 milliseconds is considered unplayable. Uh, this basically means that there's some sort of image processing or scaling or something like that, that, that the television that you're using uh, is, is placing and, and doing that's delaying stuff. It's perfectly fine for non-interactive media so watching a movie or anything like that you're not going to notice it playing a video game where you're receiving information on the screen and you're reacting to that information with a controller yeah it's it's going to matter it's going to matter quite a lot uh now the reason that input lag is so important is um well i mean you know why it's important but it has become so important among the community that even fighting tournaments, some of them will actually announce how many milliseconds of lag is, is going to be on the monitors so that these people can practice. And the last one I saw announced, it was uh, they were talking about like anywhere from six to eight milliseconds of lag, very narrow window. And Six to eight milliseconds is very hard to achieve on televisions. Um, don't even know if they can achieve that with current technology. Uh, so these these fighting tournaments are actually using computer monitors, and they're using gaming computer monitors to achieve those times. So large HDR 4K televisions, 55 inches or more, um, in this application for video games and stuff, 
try to get to as close to 14 milliseconds of lag as possible. This will give you some of the best experience that you have. Uh, you can go to uh, ratings.com, rtings.com, and research televisions. Currently, the one that I'm staring at the most is the TCL 55 inch Series 6. Um, they're great televisions, they have good HDR, and uh, they have really, really low input lag. Now, if you want to really, really dig deep into this whole thing, you can actually go purchase something called a Time Sleuth Lag Tester. Now, this is an odd-looking device in a 3D printed shell, and it has little knobs and stuff on it, and it basically creates these blinking squares, and it has a photo sensor on it or something like that that can basically measure. Uh, the input lag of any television. So you plug in an HDMI, you plug the HDMI into the television, change it to that input, and you literally take this device and you hold it up to the screen uh, and let it do its measuring and it'll display on your television how much input lag that you have. Now one of the things, there are several different things that you can do to reduce input lag. You can, uh, you can change your system or your, your uh, television into gaming mode. Um, you can turn HDR off, although a lot of people don't want to do that. You can cut back on the sharpness of the, of the image, which is a, a process that televisions actually do, and they will increase sharpness on an image that, um, that it's having an input with and stuff, and it, it actually slows things down. It actually uh, creates input lag. Um, you can change the television to PC mode. I've got a TV in my game room right now where uh, it did have a game mode and I changed it to PC mode and PC mode actually turns off all post image post-processing and that greatly improved the input lag on that television. And so that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, but the Time Sleuth Lag Tester is a great device. It'll let you fine-tune things uh, even more so than what a normal person can do. And um, this, this is all just trying my best to get you started on the path. Now, like I said, uh, Bob at RetroRGB, uh, he is much better at this, and um, so are the people over... Uh, with, you know, Corey and, and everybody else over at My Life in Gaming. So definitely check those people out. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and 15th of every month, and look forward to sharing them. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.